Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Matt Williams. I'm a tutor in politics and what is known as the Access Fellow at Jesus College. But today we're not talking about Jesus College, we're here at the lovely Harris Manchester College and I'm delighted to be here with... Katie. What are you studying? Um, I'm doing my PhD in biology. I'm a second year. Unusually for one of Oxford's undergraduate colleges, there are 30 undergraduate colleges, this college is exclusively for mature students. Yeah, so the social life at Harris Manchester is really supportive and um, there's always something going on. We're a small college and on the one hand, that means that uh, um, everybody knows what's going on. Occasionally there'll be some rumours and so on, but mm -hmm. always in a positive way. It's sort of funny and never malicious. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, um, events will just spontaneously happen. Oh, do you want to go do this? Oh, let's do this. And um, there's a lot of cohesion. Mm -hmm. And because we all have a sort of Harris Manchester background story, or origin story, okay. um, <laughs> That really unites us. We're all from such different places, but we all have this one circumstance, and that informs the social life as well. Yeah. I'm in my first year, although I am 21, because I served in the Singapore military for two years of conscription. Excellent. Now, how have you found coming here to study at Oxford? I mean, it is, it's a lot to do, of course, and it can be stressful. I think that's a given. In, in fact, I like to joke with my friends that if you're not stressed, something is wrong because you're not doing enough. <laughs> but I do love it because there's a lot to learn, there's a lot of people to meet, and there's just so much to explore. I was drawn to Oxford because I had a lot of resources from Oxford, like um, podcasts and things that the university had uploaded about 10 years ago. And I had various uh, reference books from Oxford University that I'd mostly got secondhand when I was very, very broke and trying to study independently. And I'd always enjoyed using the resources from here. And then I found myself at Harris Manchester just because I am a mature student and Harris Manchester is the most inclusive college for mature students, people who've had all sorts of different paths in life. Um, people who previously work, people who might have existing qualifications and want to take different directions in life and things like that. So it was just the best fit for me, really. So I actually went undergraduate in Nottingham, so I didn't come straight to Oxford before, so I've had experience with both unis. Um, I kind of love, well, I really enjoy seeing the disparity and the difference between Oxford and Nottingham, and seeing kind of two different sides of how universities work. And as a female in science and from a kind of access background, I initially wasn't going to apply to Oxford um, and then I kind of learned about all of the access routes and kind of made it a bit more uh, a bit less daunting I guess to apply and to kind of think that maybe you don't have to be what we would traditionally think is the kind of group that kind of get into Oxford if you know what I mean mm -hmm. unless you do them. Now, so I actually moved around a lot throughout high school I started in Australia moved to France and then um, finished off at a Russian embassy school in France. Oh, very cool. So how do you find studying in the UK given that international background? It's really interesting. I originally left a sort of English-style grammar school in Australia. I didn't have the best experience and so therefore coming here initially was quite daunting and scary because I thought, oh, it's going to be this sort of really cruel sort of um, old boys sort of rough and tumble suffering in silence experience and it really hasn't. And it took me until Hillary term to muster the courage to go into the Bodleian and, and feel like, oh, I, I'm worth it or whatever, mm -hmm. this imposter syndrome. But once it came apart, I realized, oh, it's a really supportive environment. Everybody wants you to do your best. And the further you go, the more people say, you know, outstanding, here are some resources, show us what you can do. What qualifications did you have when you applied to Harris Manchester? I had, I already had a BA from art school. I'd worked a lot as a sort of Photoshop graphic design type person. Um, and then I had done various part-time courses as a mature student. So I'd done some literary studies and some historical studies through the Oxford University Department for Continuing Education, which I really recommend. It's a really, really amazing department that is actually expanding at the moment um, and including lots of courses that you can now do online as well. Um, I studied literature and history there, which was fantastic, but there's lots of other options there as well. Mm. Oxford is quite famous for its tutorials, very small group teaching. It's a fairly unusual way of being taught at a university. How have you found those? I think a lot of it depends on how you make of the tutorials because and 
the the exact professors, the exact papers that you're taking. Because for example, um, if you come into the tutorial very well prepared and you've got questions that you want to ask, you've revised your readings, then you can make the best out of it. And I think that's where you really can shine because you are either in a small group with the professor or you're even one-on-one. -on -one. And with that, the professor can of course focus their full attention on teaching you. Um, but yeah, it does, I feel, depend very heavily on how you make of it. Because if you come up unprepared, you won't make the most out of it. Do you think before you'd applied to study at Nottingham University, you could have pictured yourself one day attending Oxford? Absolutely not. No, never in a million years. Um, it was never really on the cards. I didn't even know about half of it. I didn't know what college was, didn't know anything. I didn't even look at it on the grad. Um, it just didn't even cross my mind. But, but then kind of coming from a different uni and seeing people that had done it before me and then seeing that it might potentially be possible, that's kind of what spurred me to look into whether it was possible to come. Great. You mentioned a time when you were, I think I'm quoting, very, very broke. Uh, <laughs> what sort of support, financial support, is available to mature students, either from government or from the university or the college? Um, I found that in the UK at the moment, there is very limited support from the government for people that want to study or improve their qualifications. It, it is quite, um, quite challenging at the moment. But what I would say, very counterintuitively, is that Oxford actually has really good financial support for less well-off students. So if you're a younger student or, or a mature student and you, if you're working in a job that doesn't pay very well or if you come from a family background that's not very affluent or if you grew up in a really deprived area, I would actually say Oxford is almost one of the best places to study because they do give a lot of financial support once you're in the system and they do look after you and they have a lot more welfare and a lot more um, scholarship and bursary money available than other universities. So if you are very, very impoverished, I would actually recommend Oxford as an option. My advice would be to go for it. And even if you feel like it's never going to happen, it's really outside of anything possible, the mere fact that it's sort of come to mind is already something very significant. And that's important and should be pursued. And so I encourage everybody who feels like uh, it's, it's just something on their mind, that's a marker that you should pursue it. And, men, and I think most, if not all, will be overwhelmingly surprised by what they're capable of very often we sort of just self forfeit before anything has even begun. And so if you overwhelmingly feel like you're going to fail, do it anyway, and nine times out of ten you'll be surprised by the outcome. Yeah, there's always support out there, whether it be financial, uh, emotional, whatever support you may need, it's available somewhere. So if you're debating applying, one million percent do it, because there is quite literally nothing to lose. Um, it's really great to apply. I wish someone had just told me to apply sooner, because I think I had an idea in my head for quite a long time that I wasn't the right sort of person. I didn't fit some kind of mould. And I wish someone had sort of said to me kind of 20 years ago, oh, you know, why don't you consider that? Why don't you look at that? Um, just because, you know, in my case, I didn't have the best qualifications from school. But then I ended up doing adult education courses and I had really good grades from my adult education courses, which I was then able to use to apply. And I wish I had started that process sooner. I wish I'd had the confidence to just get the ball rolling with that much sooner rather than putting it off and feeling like I wasn't the right sort of person. Because actually, you do belong here. You know, there's lots of people yeah. that think they might not belong here, but actually they do. And we, we'd like to sort of reach out to them and make them feel welcome, really.